Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dominique Larkin. This presentation focuses on digital piracy, i.e. torrenting, and how this affects legal providers of digital products. This is an issue that directly impacts upon many digital providers and the way they present their online services. It is a very serious and current threat. Digital piracy is a broad issue that concerns the entire online and digital provider community. This presentation is geared towards legal providers of online digital material and especially targets self-publishers or small companies. The presentation will cover what digital piracy is, how it affects you, the legal providers, who pirates and why, what others are doing to reduce the impacts, and recommendations for how you can lessen the effects on you and your company. So what is digital piracy? Digital piracy has many definitions. The Cambridge Dictionary states it is the practice of illegally copying and selling digital music, video, computer software, and so on. But this isn't entirely accurate. Selling is the key word many disagree with here. Because what makes digital piracy such a contentious and troublesome issue is not that people are able to make money off of it, but that copyright is basically ignored. You also can't replace the word selling with sharing, as simply sharing the files is also not always a form of digital piracy. File sharing, in and of itself, is completely legal and it is only when the files are copyrighted that it once more becomes an illegal action. As such, digital piracy is perhaps better defined as the practice of illegally copying and sharing digital files of a protected nature. Even defined, however, digital piracy is not a simple issue. Rights of access and varying copyright infringement laws complicate the issue, and even basic copyright permissions can be unclear at times. There is also much uncertainty when it comes to who is responsible for digital piracy. Is the provider at fault? The uploader? The downloader? Witnesses? The rules concerning this, again, vary from region to region, and there is no universal law surrounding digital piracy yet. Digital piracy is also broader than most consider it to be. Although normally considered to only extend to torrents, file sharing also includes streaming. Streaming is where users are given temporary access to files, such as YouTube, and is often considered to be the legal alternative to torrenting. While this may be true for the user, who retains no copy of the material and are unable to otherwise redistribute it, this is rarely true for the uploader and provider. This is because the material must have come from somewhere, and the illegal copying and distribution of the material still defies copyright protections. Streaming is, however, considered to be easier to obtain permission to host, and often serves as the digital replacement for TV. But all of this shows that it's very easy to unknowingly become a pirate. So what do legal digital providers need to know in order to avoid becoming a digital pirate? First off, not all material is copyrighted. Some material is totally legal, even without getting permission from the original uploader. Most of this material is under a Creative Commons license. This form of file protection allows others to reproduce, distribute, promote, and to use the file, so long as you give credit to the original creator. It is important to be aware, however, that there are a number of different Creative Commons licenses out there, and some have restrictions on how the material is distributed, how the original creator is acknowledged, and if the redistributor is allowed to make money off of the material. Other ways of legally providing digital material include being a copyright holder or gaining permission from a copyright holder. So who pirates and why? Piracy is a worldwide issue with high piracy rates in Vietnam, 
China and Australia. Australia, especially, was labelled the top pirating nation in regards to pirating American TV shows. It is estimated that there are 90,000 digital pirates in Sydney alone. America itself, in comparison, reportedly has relatively low piracy rates, with only 25%. Let's have a look at why that might be. There are a number of reasons people say that they pirate, but here are the big ones. Number one, international airing delays. Some countries have to wait three months for popular TV shows, movies, and music, even if they are scheduled for a digital release. There are even some shows, such as many popular anime and French films, that are never released internationally, let alone within three months. When the internet allows for immediate connection and transfer, and is there to promote international information equality, waiting is often considered unnecessary and unfair. The problem is then agitated with the presence of spoilers. When users who have access to the material upload important secrets regarding the item, they often spoil the experience for users waiting to, for access to the merchandise. As such, the majority of users choose a pirate to bypass these issues. Number two, cheap. Most pirated copies are free. Taking something for free, which you wouldn't otherwise have to pay for, is often considered common sense. But there's more to it than that. Many commonly pirated items, especially TV shows, are actually aired for free in their country of origin but are then put onto a pay channel or are only released on DVD when released in other countries. Again, this comes down to an issue of international fairness and many pirate to subsidize this. Number three, digital restrictions. To discourage piracy, technologies such as DRM or digital rights management have been put in place to disrupt the ability to copy or distribute copyrighted material. Not only has this had no proven effect on piracy rates, but it serves to inconvenience legal users as it can interfere with completely legal actions such as copying a purchased item from your tablet to your computer. The presence of ads before, after, during or around digital material also serves to inconvenience users and many choose pirated copies because they lack these inconveniences. Number four, trial runs. Some users also pirate as a way to filter, pick or verify items that they are considering purchasing. This allows them to avoid wasting money and enhances the browsing experience. The final reason illegal file sharing may occur is because there is a lack of promotion for legal alternatives. The common solution, streaming, can be as ambiguous as torrents. Legal downloads are difficult for users to distinguish and legal releases can be a long wait or very expensive. In other words, these users aren't pirating for one reason, nor are they pirating for no reason. Their arguments make sense outside of the business industry and providers should consider this when re-evaluating how to deliver their product. But in reality, no matter how logical the pirate's argument, piracy has serious impacts on legal providers. The big issue is money. Some firms have reported more than $31 billion losses due to digital piracy. I don't think I need to tell you that that's a lot of money. The music industry appears to be the most hard hit when it comes to losing money, although the entertainment industry is perhaps the most vocal. But it's not just money that's the problem. Legal digital providers often find themselves having to conform to new copyright laws, meaning that they need to implement new copyright protections, modify their existing services, or even cut some of their products to remain legal. Because providers have an obligation to protect the content of their copyright owners, this also means that they may have to take extra measures such as trialing new copyright protection and security protocols 
which can cost not only money, but time and space as well. But staying on the right side of the law is not that easy. It can be very difficult for providers to differentiate between what is considered legal and what isn't because of differing laws and savvy pirates. This can complicate service and products, impacting on user satisfaction and profitability. The rise of digital piracy also creates trust issues that go both ways between providers and users. Some users may be exceedingly wary to take part in your services due to the apparent authority of many pirated products. This is amplified by the lack and clarity of laws from region to region and by the inability to clearly differentiate between legal and illegal sources. It is important to remember when working with these types of users that many of them are just as uninformed as you, so it is best to be as clear and precise as you can. So what can be done to reduce these impacts? Well, let's take a look at an example first. Anime, or Japanese animation, has exceedingly long waits and expenses attached to physical copies, and many digital copies are simply not provided to users. It is also one of the most notorious areas for the majority of items not being provided legally to Western society due to the expenses of dubbing, or putting a new audio on top of the original, for easy understanding. Pirates have been circumventing this issue for years, providing free fan subs to users online. This led to a big financial impact on legal providers in Western society. As such, Western society's biggest anime provider, Crunchyroll, decided to stream officially subtitled versions of the majority of newly released anime for free, online, and only a day or two after the item's release in Japan. To discourage this material being pirated, the material is only provided by streaming, is taken down once the series is scheduled to be dubbed, and is only available to viewers for a limited amount of time. But not only is this material now provided through a legal method in a timely and cheap manner, but it is now easier for users to find, as it is in the one location, the subtitles are trustworthy and highly edited, allowing for easy understanding and a more pleasant viewing experience. By not only doing the same as the pirates, but by increasing user satisfaction through other means, Crunchyroll has been able to secure its users, profits, and copyright. And so, from this, what can small businesses like you do to reduce the impacts of digital piracy? First, Find a way to provide the material as soon as it is available. Timing is one of the most prominent reasons users pirate, and it is important for legal providers to remember that the internet is universal, even if the initial release is not. Second, streaming is a good alternative to torrenting. While important to remember that copyright still has to be obeyed, this is a great way to legally provide material on time while stopping pirates from stealing the material and halting the spread. This can also serve as a taste test for users, allowing them to trial the material before they pay for it. Because the material is not being kept, the price users pay for streaming is usually a low subscription fee or completely in existence, allowing the issue of expense to also be bypassed. Third, highlight services that are legal providers, including yourself, to direct and inform your users. Remember that many users are just as uncertain as you. Fourth, offer previews of material so users can verify its worth. Again, this will give users an opportunity to give the material a trial run. Limit yourselves to regions with the same or similar copyright infringement laws in order to avoid confusion or unintentional infringement by either you or your users. And finally, limit ads and restrictions. Users of legal material don't want inconvenient and they don't want anything other than the product you offer. The less distractions you have, the more satisfied your user will be. 
So in conclusion, it's all about convenience. If a pirate service is available anywhere in the world 24-7 and can be obtained through the convenient use of a personal computer, but legal providers only offer region-locked products three months after their initial release, then the pirate service is more valuable to users. If legal providers can change this and offer things in a timely and cheap manner, then their service will be just as available and probably even more convenient. Thank you.